Hey guys, VBAD here with another V Plays, and we're taking out the SU 10, the Tier 10 Russian bomber. Uh, and this aircraft gets overshadowed by the EF 131 quite a bit. And most of the reason is that the EF-131 flies higher, it's a little bit safer, and it carries four monstrous bombs that allow it to be able to capture a zone fairly consistently because those bombs are the biggest bombs in the game and usually they'll take out an armored medium sight with just a single bomb. Now this aircraft has a larger payload of eight bombs, however, these are only going to be Fab 500, so they're going to be less damaged, a little bit smaller blast radius, but can be just as effective. So I'm actually going to drop two for each one of these, three for the center, and then two here, and for good measure, we'll just drop one right here. Uh, we are... How, how are we doing? How are we doing? Two more? All right, there was some good hits, and that last one was just enough to be able to capture that little bit of a sight that was left. We have a monster tail gunner set up on this, and you can actually see it. On the dorsal, there's two 20s, and on the tail, there's two 20s, and they actually have overlapping field of fire for anything that's actually above the aircraft. You also have a centrally mounted 23 millimeter cannon, and we have some pretty decent speeds we can get up to, some good hit point pool of 2300 HP. And we have actually gone for a bit of, I'm not gonna say it's a stealth build, but we've uh, given ourselves a little bit more concealment to try and, you know, hide what we're doing as we sneak across the battlefield here. We managed to pick up the command center early, but it looks like the enemy is gonna be coming after ours as well. I would like to be able to pick theirs up before their bomber flight can get to our site. That's my goal anyways. We should be reloaded in three seconds. We are flying a little bit lower, but again, we actually want things to get into our tail gunner. So we're actually gonna have to make a double pass here just because of the angles. So let's do two here, one here, two. This is kind of a weird setup the way they have this zone, which Puts us at a slight disadvantage. So I'm actually going to make a bit of a turn here. Let's, uh, oh, wrong way with the rudder. Let's angle up. Now we'll angle back down to get that speed back up. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I'll just come right at you. Oh, they took my tail. That's a little bit unfortunate. Let's go one, two, three. And then we'll hop into the tail gunner and we can just see what type of punishment this thing can kick out. There we go. Yeah, they're out of sight, out of mind now. Get a little bit more distance from these guys. Tail's back up and operational. Took a bit of a beating there, but that was foreseen considering we're the only aircraft in the zone. We did put a bit of a hurt on them. Hopefully the heavies will be able to kill one of the defense aircraft and give us a bit of the advantage. We are currently about to lose our sight. So I'm going to make my way back over to our command center and see if we might be able to turn the tables a little bit. There is an enemy heavy on the other team that is a specialized heavy aircraft, so we're going to have to keep an eye out for that. Heavies are there, bomber flights there. Yeah, we're going to have to we're going to have to wait for the unlock to happen on this thing. back off a little bit. We'll come back into that site in just a second. I'm actually kind of banking on them picking that up. There we go. We flipped it a little bit early. Now our bomber flight's going to head for the airfield. Yeah, that's a full flight of bombers. Oh, we did kill a bomber in the zone, however. It's just not going to be enough. Yeah, we're really just playing the waiting game there, quite literally. Let's do a little... Actually, that's not what I wanted. I wanted this guy to get targeted. Seven seconds. Okay. Let's get a little bit lower so we get better accuracy on this thing. Do the single there. Double. Three. 
and then two and then let's get the heck out of dodge before this becomes a problem hey guys oh no 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 okay looks like we lost an aircraft in the zone that's gonna hurt us quite a bit this is why i always say please don't die in the zone because usually i'm in the process of trying to capture that site oh it's a human Oh, wow, look at that. That's what happens when a light fighter gets on your tail, guys. Didn't quite kill him, it looks like, but he's definitely feeling it. Now he's dead. Oh, man, we are getting hosed by that state-born guy. Good flying on his part. He's definitely putting us on the back burner here. And I think we're about to lose a multi-roll right here. I'm watching that engagement unfold. Not much else we can do. We are top scorer on the team, and that's a pretty consistent result for us. It's just hard to combat losing allies. Oh, we picked up the airfield, however. That's going to do us pretty good. All right, I'm just going to blitz through the zone, essentially. Looks like that guy's trying to get on our attacker. I'm actually just going to scoop by on the periphery here. Hop into the tail gunner and see if we might be able to offer some assistance here. And not, not quite enough. Bombs will be up in a moment. Come on guys, you can pick that up, can't you? That's a sad state of affairs. I gotta come back to capture a whisper of a zone. Yeah, okay, good. That was gonna be silly. Go for sure things. Double drops. That was a single drop. That finger. There we go. We're gonna go for a reload. We are at their spawn. Let's pull back. State boring got knocked out. Okay. You just call it good game. Not quite over yet, that's for sure. I think we'll be reloaded by the time we get over there. Here's the hoping, at least. Yeah, we're, we're too quick. Okay, punk punk. I think that's about right. Oh, hi, you're literally right here. Breaks. One down. Almost. Oh, hey. I see you. Get all guns on. Crits, 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 crits. Oh, and he's dead. Nice. There we go. Nice grab, boys. We can head over to the airfield. 16k. 18 seconds. Yeah, we got a little bit of time. 
plan the attack run. Should be zone. Little sector, little sector. Here's the big tower right there. Okay. Repair shot doesn't do us any good. This is overkill. We're going to do double drops here. And double drop. Yeah, that was a little wide, but gonna do. And grade one. Not too bad. And we're not gonna get the zone like that, but watch me shred this guy. Hey, buddy. Bye, buddy. <laughs> and that was that was actually a good battle. I had a previous battle to this that we actually lost, but we didn't lose it based on points. We based we lost it based on me not being able to acquire command center early enough. Uh, actually lost it to a, a pretty skilled OWSS player as well. That's off to Skillborn. I think he did a really good job of trying to counter us. Uh, coincidentally, the previous match um, was also against a specialized HG3. So <laughs> it's an aircraft that's definitely a good counter to a tier 10 bomber aircraft but again we had good positioning uh i like to think we had good placement on bombs and we were able to rack up some pretty decent personal points as well as 690 capture points and 124,000 damage and we managed to destroy 19 ground targets of that we were able to take out eight medium armored ground targets and five special ground targets now We've already kind of gone over the the bomb payload and how quickly the reloads. It's not a quick reload. It's 70 seconds. But with eight bombs and the ability to spread out 67,000 damage, uh, you actually have some um, pretty good amount of peanut butter to spread if you would. Meanwhile, if you were to look at the EF-131, while it does have a faster reload, it only has 48,000 in the form of these four bombs. But these are 10,000 damage apiece and a blast radius of 394 feet. Do your own conversion, but if you want to draw a comparison here, the Fab 500s are only 295 feet, but they're 7,000 damage, and we get eight of them. So with more peanut butter to spread, it makes it a lot easier for a Su-10 to potentially flip a zone in a single pass, while an EF-131 could potentially need to do a double drop on some of the special sites, and if you noticed, if we won't go after a command center and you take out the square, the round, and a square radar dish setup, we still needed to get that one AA site to be able to finish flipping the zone just to get that extra little capture to, to hit us over the edge. Otherwise, you've done most of the capture, and then you're still relying on some of your buddies to potentially finish off a target. This aircraft, let's say the bomb spread doesn't go exactly the way we want it to, we still have the potential damage of 384 damage per second with a range out to 3,600 feet with our current configuration. And yes, I've maximized for range just like we did in the A26B video. However, I did it with a purpose here because this aircraft's ability to start causing damage at range means that I have that much more time to get those crits on the enemy aircraft and also get that kill on that aircraft before they can turn too far away like we saw with the MiG-15 at the end of that last battle. The Russian bombers play a lot different from any of the other bombers throughout all of the tiers. However, the Su-10 is a major departure from even the Russian bomber line because this can only drop when it's flying straight and level. It can't drop while in the dive. So with that, it, it changes the, the way you kind of think about playing this aircraft, but at the same time, you're also actively thinking about how you can engage with these turrets. And honestly, flying at a lower altitude, because I feel like the bomb spread's pretty bad on this aircraft, that you can get all of these turrets to overlap on their fire, because it's mostly getting that dorsal one to engage to be able to also hit targets. And when we talk about damage per second, some of you might be saying, well, V, that's not a lot of damage. You know, my uh, 1101 can do like 800 damage a second. You know, like, that's fine, man. But bear in mind that these are turrets. 
that means that all I got to do is get the reticle on you and hit my left mouse button and all those guns are already hitting your aircraft. Now it's just a matter of whether or not I get a crit by letting it focus in. Meanwhile, your 1101 still has to aim and you overheat. I'm getting continuous damage of 384 damage a second on your aircraft and I barely have to do any work to make that happen. I can spend the rest of my time messing around with my A and D keys as well as my, my I have my F key mapped for pitch up to be able to change my angle to make it a little bit more difficult for you to hit me and then I just keep that mouse centered on you and I hold down that left mouse trigger and next thing you know I'm just reeling your aircraft with holes and that MiG-15 human controlled aircraft learned very quickly not to mess with the Su-10. Uh, we are working on specializing this platform and once we get there we'll be able to put on the consumable for the turret so we can put on universal ammo i'm not quite sure what i'm going to do with the engine slot i may even go with operated engine who knows just to get that extra little oomph but i also might go with the what is it the engine armor protection i'm still not entirely sure which direction i want to go with this i will tell you though for the outboard weapon i'm most likely going to be going with the bomb sight Again, that bomb site is going to allow me to get that spread that I said seems a little bit hokey sometimes more into a more finite point, and I can roll for increased damage and damage and blast radius on the bomb. So by doing that, it's going to make this thing even more effective as a bomber platform instead of a bomber platform with a, a huge secondary role as a gun base as well. Uh, I enjoy this platform. I think it's neat. I actually went for this before I went for the EF-131 because the EF-131 I thought was going to be the meta and still is the meta. But the Su-10 is also a lot of fun if you do like this style of gameplay. I equate it a lot to the RB-17, which is the premium tier 8 bomber for the Russian line. And because it bombs in the same way, straight and level, uh, got to hit into the bomb reticle, but at the same time, it uses that tail gunner a lot, almost as an offensive defensive piece of machinery. So if you're used to that aircraft, you're probably going to do just fine in the Su-10. The EF-131, though, I cannot discount as a very powerful aircraft with those monster bombs being very forgiving with this platform. Uh, but this is more about the Su-10, right? I haven't done a lot of videos on this, so... Hopefully you guys enjoyed this and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.